Hello and welcome back to the, the continuation of tutorial 12, the static mixer. Okay, so remember this case is a 3D case when launching flu Fluent. Do not forget to to uh, to launch it in 3D mode. Okay, so I will open the file. Okay, so this case is, is it is inexpensive. I wish I would just show you to how to run one case and then I have a, 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 a uh, solutions that I would use to show you different scenarios. So we have here in the case presentation, you have how to set up the case. Okay. So it's relatively st straightforward. So we're going to use incompressible flow. Okay. With no temp energy equation or with energy equation, but density constant. Okay. So there is only term thermal diffusion. Okay. Just to show it will be kind of a passive scalar equivalent to a passive scalar. Uh, so go here. And this is our inlets, outlets, okay. And we have our walls, okay. So this is our geometry, okay. And remember that you have here the vertical workflow. So let me revisit that again in 3D, nothing changed. So pressure base, steady solver, enable energy, okay. Then here I choose my turbulence model. So for the sake of sim simplicity, just to show you at the beginning, I will choose the standard K epsilon with curvature correction. Okay. I will leave it like that. Then materials, just a reminder that here, okay. Remember that I'm using density constant. So I just want thermal diffusion. I don't want any chance due to density or any chance in density or, or viscosity due to temperature and then boundary conditions. Okay. So here you set inlet cold, hot. Okay. So you put your, your value, temperature value, but also tolerance quantity quantities and that's all. Okay. So at this point we're ready to go. Remember always to set up your, your monitors. Okay. And let me initialize this case. So probably this is not a good initialization. Let me put everything zero, zero, zero. Okay. And here I go calculate. Okay. So I'm using the standard K epsilon and let's say that the, that the standard K epsilon is not plot here. Let's see what, 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 what it will give, give us in this case. So as I mentioned, this is a 3D case, but the mesh is not very fine. It's a wall modeling me mesh, as we mentioned in the case presentation. You can make it also wall resolvance one, you have all the dimensions there. So let's monitor a little bit the solution. Let's see what happens. Let's see that we have not bad behavior. Okay. So it's going down. Okay. It's just four iterations. And see that here it appears that it will start to stabilize that monitor. Our mouse flow is also slating a little bit. Remember, a method is conservative, so what is going in is going out. So basically, I'm monitoring that imbalance here that should be closer to zero. See, it's a little bit high, but see, it's going down towards zero. This is the average Y plus, so I'm not going to expect to have a constant value here. But it can be also a good monitor. And here at the outlet, I have the uh, area weighted average velocity. Okay, so see that this one is kind of uniform. So it's telling me already the outlet, we might have uniform flow. Also at the outlet here, since that is becoming already uniform. And our residuals just going down. So this should, should, should converge, not, not too many today, should probably, I don't recall, 300. Okay, also, well, we depend on the turbulence model. I don't recall this one. So I will let it run a little bit more and let's see what, what happens, okay? Okay, so after about 300 iterations, since that the residuals are stalled, but this is not a problem. Remember, here is what you need to check. So this quantity, this monitor needs to be seems to be stable. So let me stop it here. Okay, and the idea here it was to to check the turbulence production in 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 the interior of the of the domain. So see what we have here. This is the K excellent case, and see here that. Here in the middle, it is producing some thermal viscosity. Okay, but 
see that in reality we have that vortex there that it shouldn't be producing. So see that is this one is have the trend to produce trend viscosity in the core of the vortex. What, what in reality should be something like this. Okay, so this is the K accident without that quarter correction. You can also check the behavior in these directions. Okay, I uh, just to remind you that you can plot plot some of the path lines, so you can release something like this, and you can see that what we were looking at here, the velocities are, are lower. So let me change this one for velocity. So in the center, we should have really low. And it's producing very, very, <clears throat> very high torrent viscosity in the core. Okay, so let me go here. And if I put velocity here, outer range. Okay, so see that in the center, see that velocity is very low. And the theory should tell us, the theory tells that is the, is that is the case, why should we produce too much viscosity there? Okay, and this is the problem in this case. So it's, again, if I go back here, turn viscosity, see that is producing too much. Okay, so see that in this case, this model, the K-accident, it's not a very good one. Okay, and even probably, I think, I, I left enable the curator correction. See that it's not doing a good job. So if you change the model and as you go back to the theory, you will realize that these two are improvement of, of the standard just to take into account this effect. So let me go and use the RNG. Okay. And let me launch a few iterations. Okay. Just to show you. So changing the model, we have the typical jump there. So let's wait a few iterations. Okay. So let's see what happens. But again, see that here you have an effect here, an effect here that it seems to be large, but who knows? You need always you need to to let it run for a while. Okay. So at this point, let's run. Let's see for what happens in two hundred iterations. Okay. Okay, so at this point, if you look at your solution, see what happens here. So see that in this case, see that now we're capturing better here the in the recirculation area. See that we don't produce too much turbulent viscosity there. Okay, so this is the ideal behavior that we should end. And this is everything due to the fact that we're using a better model, but also the curvature correction. So at this point, let's open a new case. Okay, so I have the solutions in this case. And let's open now, for instance, the K the, the K accident realizable with no curvature correction. Okay. So this one we already know from the to the from the theory that should give worse results. So I open in here a pre-computed solution. So see that when I put uh, plot the results and take a look at these scales. Okay, so see that if we are values are from zero to zero point one. Okay, but see that is quite large values. Okay, with no curvature correction, and see that at the core is also producing too much uh, torrent viscosity there, which will expect lower values. Okay, and see here when, when we look in the other plane. So now let's change the turbulence model. Okay, so remember that you enable those actions there, curvature correction. So if we open now with curvature correction of the pre-compute solutions, okay, we were going to reproduce the, those results. So basically, if we look at the same plots, see that now we have a completely different behavior. Okay, so see that in the core thermal viscosity is very low, then also lower values in the whole planes, you know, all now the planes there that you see there, we have lower values of thermal viscosity. So this will add less less dissipation to the case. Likely you will resolve better the physics. Okay. So this is 
and overall the effect of this curvature correction, okay? So the same will happen if you choose a Reynolds stress model. Remember this Reynolds stress model, but the, because they are more sounded in the sense that you resolve more equations doesn't mean that they are better, okay? They are very tricky to make converge, okay? So if you run this case, you will find a lot of convergence problems. You will need to use uh, precursor simulations so, and so on, okay? So you have many options here. So you can play with those options. And as you see, there are no corrections here because the Reynolds stress models, they, you need to add these production limiters or curvature corrections. They are already in the model. But again, they are very difficult to make converge. So just to take a look at, at, the, at a solution, so see that in the same planes and see that the torrent viscosity values are very low. So let's adjust the scales and see what we have, okay? So it's something very nice. So see that it's only adding viscosity, torrent viscosity where you have high strain rates, okay? Where you have that large, the, the spin tensor where you have an strong spin tensor. So this is the idea of these models and these are situations where this model performs very well, okay? And if we take a look now at monitors, okay, so see that in this case, the monitors remains stalled quite fast, okay? That, that is not a direct indication that it's wrong or right. Remember that you always need to monitor some other quantities. But generally speaking, to make converse these solvers, it's, it's very difficult, it's quite tricky, and you need to use precursor simulations and, and monitor continuously the, the solution. So see there that you have all your Reynolds stresses that you're resolving besides your standard equations of the turbulence model. Okay, so I think that's all for this case. Again, feel free to, to play and try to reproduce to these results. See you next time. Thank you very much for your attention.